going to go ahead and play today with some crushed olive, broken china, speckled egg, maybe some other colors as well. I thought it'd be kind of fun to just dive in with some Distress Oxides to start before dabbling with some paints. And I'm just really looking to experiment. The goal today is really to kind of just play a little bit. Um, I thought it would be fun to just kind of, I don't know, print. It's been a while. I don't know how everybody's been lately. I have been dealing with life as most have. Hey there, welcome. Just really just wanting to kind of get the creative juices going. Not quite sure how many of you have played with oxides before on a plate. Welcome, Mary. Of course, just contaminated my, my pad. And the one thing about oxides versus dye, um, kind of a little bit of a different mixture, but that kind of stuff doesn't ever bug me. It used to bug me when I first started but you can very easily just kind of go like this. And then as long as it comes up the right color, it's fine. I really love this salvage patina. It's really one of my, like, I seem to like reach for it a lot, that, and also speckled egg. Speckled egg is really one that I absolutely adore. I'm just kind of like, really just kind of looking to get some good coverage here before using a brayer. This is gonna kind of keep it a little active before it like dries out. I'm kind of liking these colors and wanting to explore a little more and I wanna bring in a different blue here. I think what I'm gonna do is kind of, hey Karen. So Karen, this came up live then, in public. I, I set the stream up right, huh? <laughs> I tell you, if I didn't have Karen to help me with the tech aspects of setting up all these lives. I don't know what I would do. She's been an absolute lifesaver for me. <laughs> absolute lifesaver for me. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of blend these out because I'm not really sure exactly how this is going to look. I know Tiffany, my friend Tiffany, she loves to play with, with oxides. Now I can see, cause you know, I love to use um, you know, acrylic ink is my go-to. So, you know, this is a really more um, kind of like ink pads that I would use, you know, in the stamping world. Uh, just kind of spreading some of the ink around. There we go. And uh, I think before kind of diving in, I just want to take a pull and just kind of see how this looks. I'm not really sure if I'm going to like it. You know, I have all the Distress Oxides, but I gotta be honest, I don't reach for them. I don't know about everybody else. You've done a lot, what Karen's done a lot. Yeah, they don't, they definitely don't dry as fast, which is nice, I do know that. Um, and that has more to do with the formulation of the ink. Uh, just gonna, yeah, see how this goes. I'm just like really in a masculine color mood lately, not so much brights. I go through my little phases. Ah, that's kind of cool. I'm liking that. So this is kind of a fun little um, combination. And I love how the crushed olive just kind of blending with the patina here. That's pretty. The speckled egg kind of gives it a little bit of nice variation. And I like the blend between the speckled egg and the olive down here. This is, hey, Tiffany, the queen of oxides. Are you impressed that I'm using actual um, actual distress? You guys are going to have to forgive me because I just realized I didn't plug my computer in. My computer's going to die and that will kill the stream. So I would love to know in the chat if anybody um, has ever had any issues with distress oxides. Let me 
let's see how I can do this. There we go. You know, it would not be good if the power kicked off. Always fun when somebody walks away from the stream, right? We'll have to edit that part out. <laughs> Nothing like being live. Yeah, I know. This is, but this is actually really kind of fun. So now that I'm going to print, um, and this isn't the very first time I've ever done this. I have done this before. And I love how um, oxides always kind of feel like velvet to me on the paper. Uh, but this is a really good base uh, to just continue to print. So let's do that. We'll stick with our colors that we use. Maybe we'll pull in some other ones. I did bring out some other colors as well. And I thought that the reason that I'm doing this today, and I don't really have, I'll be very honest, I don't have a game plan, which is how I kind of sit down to create sometimes. And I don't know about you all, but, you know, when you're being artists and you're making projects, sometimes I have sketches and I have a plan, but a lot of times I just kind of like to see where it takes me. So I wanted to test it out and see how a stream was directly from YouTube in all transparency here, um, because I know that we've had some issues lately with things buffering because I was using a third party connection. So you'll all have to help me out today and tell me how the quality of the stream is as we go forward. So here we go, a little bit more salvage patina. And I know that this is like one of Karen, Karen Tamir. Um, she's in the chat too. I know this is one of her favorite colors. It really truly is one of mine as well. Develop and pull a landscape. That would be interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. Let's see here. I'll tell you what, Mary, I'm gonna have to think that through and plan that one out but I will definitely do that stream because I love that. And if you all want to see landscapes, um, then I will 100% set up a stream for that. So crushed olive. Now, the one thing that I'm noticing is this is like really kind of overpowering. So I want to have um, the stream is a bit fuzzy. Interesting. Huh. All right. Well, then that means I need to call the cable company, <laughs> quite honestly, because this is like the last ditch effort of trying to figure out why this is happening. <laughs> because I have a brand new camera that's a 4K camera. We've set things up through different streams. And this is like, I don't know about you all, but tech sometimes, I'm pretty tech savvy. But this has been really frustrating because I want you all to kind of get to see everything. So I have some leftover ink on this, I can see. So let me just kind of brayer that off. Before going into this really, really uh, overpowering color, you can live with fuzz. <laughs> well, since I have a 4K camera, I want this to be clear. I don't want it to be fuzzy. It's driving me crazy. Uh, tech, I bought a new camera. You know, really trying to get everything that we need to get these streams perfect. I have no problem in Zoom, but for some reason, when I'm in YouTube, it just isn't straight. I am definitely going to take you up on that, Tiffany. So, okay, I've got this down. I'm going to actually print over this. I've kind of kept the colors in the same somewhat general area. Um, but I think what I'm going to do now is start applying some different texture marks. So I just I just grabbed the rest of my um, paper towels here and it left me the roll. So I'm going to kind of create some marks with this. I thought hmm, that'll make some cool little interesting circles. Why not? Big giant polka dots. All right, so there's some of that. And maybe we could even grab some of this texture that's on here, would be interesting. Always has interesting patterns, you know, in paper towels. I don't know how, how well that's gonna come out, but we'll see. That might be something better for paint, but I have a feeling that that's not going to, I don't think that's gonna work the way I want it to. I don't want to mess up my other print, so I'm going to actually pull this and try that, see how it turned out. We'll see. Okay, I'm totally calling you, Tiffany, <laughs> to help me with this. All right, here we go. Oh, it did work. 
really well. It didn't look like it, but that's interesting. Look at all that texture that that paper towel created. You can see the circles. Okay, so here's the here's the paper towel. But the thing is, you can also see my fingerprint. So I don't want that. Um, so but I have to be very intentional when I do that. But that's a lot of very interesting texture. Now that's a great beginning of like a background. So even though it didn't work out great, it's fine. You know, even if you were to cut that down, that's very interesting. You could add a little bit more to the top. Um, you know, it's got some interesting texture, some interesting depth to it. And even, you know, it's just all about sometimes when you're looking at something really big, it doesn't look like, you know, it turned out, but when you start to break it down, then it does. So Tiffany, I have a question for you since you're in the chat and you're one of the distress oxide experts um, or Karen too. I know you're in here. Or anybody else, if you know, best way to seal something like this so that it doesn't um, it doesn't continue to move. Distress glaze. What do y'all think? Just out of curiosity. Okay, I'm gonna keep going here. Same color palette. I put the, the the lighter color down first before coming in with the salvaged patina. I love this speckle blue. Since Tim has released new colors this year and all the old colors, yeah, I know you don't usually seal stuff. It's funny, you know, it's just distress oxides are not the thing, they're not my go-to thing. I really kind of shy, I have them all, or most of them, but I kind of shy away from them a little bit. Um, I was saying something, I lost my train of thought, but uh, let's see here. I'd love to know in uh, the chat or if you're watching the replay, you know, what your favorite blue is out of the entire line. There's so many blues and greens in the um, rainbow line. So what are your go-to colors? I'll let you pick two. How's that? If you could only use two colors, blues and green, two blues and two greens, what are those colors? So now I'm going to actually continue with... Oh, gel medium. That's a great idea, Karen. I'm going to add some of this texture back down again. Salty Ocean Salvage Patina. Ooh, that's an interesting combination. Love this. This is really... It's funny. I'm For work, um, I'm on a podcast for work and also, uh, you know, do a lot of Zooms and a lot of classes and things like that. And I've noticed, I say love that a lot. <laughs> it's one of the things where you don't realize it until you listen to yourself back. <laughs> I want to add some texture uh, with some stencils. So I've got this. I know Karen's on here. I can't remember the name of the stencil. She designed it. I love this stencil with these, um, these kind of triangles. And I've just kind of grabbed a bunch of stencils that I are kind of like go-to ones for me. And just want to see if anything is calling me right now. Okay. And I want to remove some of the paint. Just in certain air paint. See, I called it paint. Just some of the oxides. Just kind of lifting it up with this. And just wanting to kind of lift up some of that pattern with this paper towel. I didn't want it to all be there. And then from there... I just wanted to add a different pattern. All right. And this is another joggle stencil. The first one was a joggle stencil designed by Karen. This one is designed by Elizabeth St. Hilaire. And this is kind of like patterned after Van Gogh. I love this one. Broken China is one of my favorites. Um, that's, I'm with you there, Mickey Mouse. Um, and just trying to remember where that color is and let's go ahead and just pull this pattern up a little bit let's see what happens when we do that I 
Ooh, I like that. That's kind of cool. And you have some of that little bit of polka dots from where I had gone through the triangles. And I'll have to take a different poll here. Yeah, this is not exactly like printing with uh, paint. So it's a little different. We're still going to do paint as well because I thought it would be kind of fun to do that. I can't not print with paint. Paint is my go-to medium when it comes to gel printing. I'm excited about this, though, because where that pattern was pulled up, this is really pretty. I'll be honest. I'm really liking this. You know what I love about this the most is the subtleness to it, the subtlety. You know, and when you break it down here, it's kind of nice. This is because of the brayer had a little bit of the olive. So when I went up here, it just kind of transferred that over here. And um, I always love for like unexpected things that make me smile. I love how we had the little, we have a little bit of paint on the actual plate and that prevented stuff from coming up, which is kind of gives it this nice organic feel. And, uh, you know, you can even break this down, make some really cute little tags or like die cut a circle and have a nice focal piece to it. But this stencil on top of it also has that kind of lightness to it. Um, all right. So we'll pull that. Ooh, look at that. So this one has a lot of the other texture in it. You can see where the triangles are in there, especially in here with the extra pattern in the triangle shape from this stencil right here. You can, if I were to put it back on and then take it off, then you can kind of see the triangles in the line. I only pressed it down in certain areas. That's pretty cool. Um, this is kind of interesting. It kind of feels like a bluish green kind of zebra, a little nice different colors. I'm gonna have to make some cards. This is making me want to make some cards, you know, just like some cards for any situation. Um, nice masculine uh, colors, but this could also work for anything. Um, yeah, fun. Okay, cool. That was good. Like that. Let's 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 dig into some other colors. Now I'm leaving everything on here. I'm not worrying about the design or any colors or anything that's on there. I'm just going to keep going forward um, using a little bit of fossilized amber now. And let's pull in some. I love this color, wild honey. Wild honey is one of my favorites. It just has a really nice depth to it. I used to reach for it all the time. Oh, you're welcome. I think Father's Day cards coming up. I'm excited to make to make something for my dad. I need to get that in the mail quick because he lives in Europe. <laughs> a little bit of orange, I think, would be kind of interesting. Um, I think I'm going to add the orange up here and pull it in with, oh, no, I definitely need to add that down here. I was going to just pull it in with the brayer, but yeah, that's going to be fun. I'm feeling like I need to reach for a pink, which I didn't grab. I'm not even sure if I have. Let's see. Oh, you. I could not have picked raspberry, right? This is going to be a good combination. This is like a go-to combination for me when I use the dye-based inks and did a lot of ink blending or smushing um, these colors. So naturally, I'm going to go to them um, you know, here as well using the oxides. Just remove that. And then once it comes up just pink, you're good. I don't ever worry about cross contamination and stuff like that. I used to really freak out about a lot of that kind of stuff, but it's just an ink pad. It's not the end of the world. All right. So now I have a lot of blues and things like that. And just because I know I'm going to end up transferring it over, this is one that I've got a, built up a little texture on so that's not going to bray her out very well let's use this one all right and my first thing i'm going to do is just kind of blend the color a little bit yes exactly mary that combination of colors um i'm glad you like this one uh you know i would just go with what your go-to's are i don't see why they would be totally different from the regular dye-based one inks oh i'm really loving this so far so I think instead of, because I know I have a yellow one here and it doesn't dry super, super quick. So just brayering that off screen a little and then I'm gonna come in here. And what I wanna do is just kind of blend this out a little bit. And it's the same principle as whether or not this is paint or ink. So we're just gonna go ahead and just continue to brayer up and down here. 
and just kind of create that effortless blend between the colors. Um, and that's going to give it that kind of lightness to it. Just kind of wearing that off a little bit. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to start just like we did with the last one and pull a background piece that we can then layer on top of. Okay, so let's do this like here, like so. And just grab a piece of deli paper because I'm getting it all over my hands. And I want to get pull up as much of the color as I possibly can. So just really want to get in here. I think I'm going to actually take my brayer so that I get a really good amount of color transferring to my paper. So basically, I'm kind of just allowing the ink a little bit of time to connect, to bond with the paper before pulling it. So, all right. I love that. See, I said I love that. Ooh, very pretty. You can see I was a little too harsh with my brayer here. I created some lines so we can still kind of, as we add to that, um, we'll kind of layer that out. Very pretty. It's kind of like... Um, it reminds me of sherbet or cotton candy or sunsets. Um, very, very cool. So let's add some more to that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a little bit of the fossilized amber and limit limit the pink because I feel like the pink is overpowering it a little bit, but I want to have a little bit more transition. And I think I'm going to go to some more wild honey. Got a little kind of hair there. You're saying pull it the other way. So instead of pulling it this way, pull it this way. Well, yeah, I can't guarantee that I'm going to create more lines. Um, the goal is to not create lines with the prayer. But uh, sometimes that happens when you have too much going on on the sides. If your prayer has, uh, you know, starting to get a lot of paint over on the sides um, and you haven't really you know, clean stuff off. Sometimes it can be a higher lip. And uh, also if you press down too hard, you can get those marks as well. I'm feeling like I need a little bit of lightness here. So let's add, let's add a little bit more orange. And then I'm going to leave some gaps and kind of blend some of the colors together, I think. And we'll blend those then over the pink and kind of see what happens. Um, let me take a relatively new brayer here. Well, it's not a new brayer. I just peeled all the paint off. It was very satisfying to do. Anybody ever do that? Peel all the paint from their brayer? Like in one big pull? There we go. This is just kind of brayering out. Nice. That's a good question, Karen. I am in North Carolina, so it's about 94 degrees right now. Not quite 94 yet. Um, it's pretty hot today. It's not humid, if that's helpful. Um, and it's been wet, you know, like it's not drying relatively quick. Um, I know that you're in a really dry area. Um, I believe that if you're like in Florida or someplace like that, um, I'm just gonna try and even out this color first before pulling more. Um, if you're like in Florida or places like that, obviously it stays wet a lot longer during, especially down there, it's already humid this time of year. I lived there for 10 years. Ooh, that's nice. You see how that knocked the pink back a little bit, but intensified the yellow, the yellow areas. And it kind of knocked, kind of knocked some of those, those lines that we had back. And I think that once we add pattern to it, um, that's going to be even even cooler. So, and I love, I love all my little paint, my little paint pieces that I have in here. I'm just kind of picking some off. Um, if you ever have stuff that get, is getting in your way that you don't want to add texture and character, um, a great way to pick that up is actually packing tape as well. Um, or this is really good. Uh, just like hand sanitizer that has um, a higher alcohol content, just like you would want for your hands. Uh, and that is a great way to actually completely clean a plate. 
Um, so since I ran my hands over that, let me just kind of, I kind of picked some of those paint scabs off. Let's now add a little bit more pink, but blend it out a little bit. And I want to add a stencil. So we're adding um, some pattern to it. So I'm not really worried so much about just plopping stuff down and it not blending because that's what the brayer is for, right? Add some, add some orange and I really would love to have like a different yellow. I wonder if I have, I think I do. I don't have like or um, something brighter. Unfortunately, uh, so Let's add some wild honey. What's your go-to yellow with the, with uh, the distress line? Let's go ahead and just blend this out a little. Yeah, I feel like he has um, squeezed lemonade and there's another one that I can't, there's scattered straws a little on the lighter side. Um, there's another one that I can't think of the name right now that I use a lot in the uh, regular distress inks. Oh, that's very orange. Hmm. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here and pull it up with my brayer and then add it. Because who says it has to be on the plate, right? You can always use a second plate. To, it's just like you would with paint. Don't think of it any different um, than that. A deep blush red. Yes, I agree with you there. All right. So now let's add, I want a happy stencil. I want a happy stencil. Got little, little, I like to think of these as little rainbows. Um, it's kind of like to me a happy stencil. This is a joggle stencil. And uh, I love this one. It's really, it's really fun to play with. I like using it also to put like black onto like a colorful piece. Yeah, squeeze lemonade is a good one. So let's go ahead and add this. Yeah, wild honey is gorgeous. I know there's a yellow beyond squeeze lemonade that he has. I can't think of what it is. All right, so let's see what we got. Fun. Because it's not, here's the thing. You could add something, like I could add something totally different, like go full on pink. Maybe we should. Let's add just a little tiny bit of interest in different ways. So I have some other stencils, you know, um, some different things that we can, this one doesn't feel right. This one might be interesting. So... Let's pull this up. And since I still have ink down here, let's just take a, a white piece of paper. And this is Nina. This is Nina exact paper. It's what I like to do gel printing with. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. You can get a whole ream for about, you know, 15 bucks. Not really sure what the cost is nowadays. I think I paid 12 once. I've paid a variety of prices on Amazon. I have it linked in um, the supply list that I have in the description area. And if I don't have my gel printing list there, I will put it after the stream. Um, but it's called Nina Exact. So it's not the same cardstock that you would make cards with, where we're all, a lot of us use Nina Solar White. That is a thicker piece of cardstock. This is a little bit lighter. It's great for layers because it's not as heavy. And at the same time, it's really great for gel printing without, you know, breaking the bank. And that's a kind of fun background right here. I love that we have the white, which is providing contrast versus this one. This one needs a little bit more. So I'm gonna build on this one. Same principle as you would with, um, with paint. It's no different, no different. So I actually like this, believe it or not, I like this at this point, at this stage. I like this one over this one. So if this was print A and this was print B, leave me a comment here in the chat or in, if you're watching the replay, I want to know which one is your jam. The one that's kind of like the ghost print or the one that was the intentional print at this stage, at this stage. 
Interesting. So this is A, this is B. Interesting. So you guys are all going with the color. Yeah, see, I have a tendency to, to, to go towards the ghost prints, but not done. That's for sure. So even though we have some color and stuff on here, I'm not going to worry about it too much. You could always take, uh, you know, a scrap piece of paper or, um, you know, like a piece of copy paper. I like to use copy paper also. Yeah, I like them both, Karen, too. <laughs> I'm with you. You can always take a piece of copy paper and pull up if you're looking to just clean without actually fully cleaning. Um, just to make sure that you have stuff off if that's something that's bothering you. And let's say you're like switching color palettes. Because I kind of feel like I'm seasoning the plate with the inks um, as I'm going. Rather than going from a completely clean one that has everything stripped from it. Does that make sense? When I put it that way. So from here, let's go ahead and start adding um, some other things. So I'm not going to go like if I were adding to say this one, I would probably I could do black and I can also do brown. I wouldn't go brown on this one. I would go with something that's totally different. I think brown and this is just not really going to jive all that well. Um, you'll, this is where you also want to pay attention to like the color wheel. So let's go with black soot. And my goal now is not necessarily to add, you know, like over the entire, the entire uh, plate right now. My goal is really to do some pieces. So we'll start here. I'm going to kind of clean off my brayer because I've got distress oxide does not dry very fast. So I have a piece of like scrap paper off to the side and I'm just like rolling and rolling until a good amount is gone, right? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a different one rather than getting my one filled with black. So I just wanna brayer the black out a bit. Just so I have some, and I'm just gonna keep it at the top here. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of ink on there still. All right, now we're gonna add some pattern. So I am going to reach for my, this is again a joggle stencil. I really love joggle stencils. They're just, first off, they don't break the bank. It's a huge size and the bulk of them are like six, seven dollars uh, versus many other companies where they're closer to 10. And they have some really interesting designs. She does a really nice job with having a variety of artists as well as in-house ones that are designed. I'm gonna take this and I'm not gonna cover it on the whole place. I'm just going to add just a little here and there. So what I'm really looking for, and I'm just gonna kind of go in little spots is pull up some pattern just to add a little. And I know that may freak some of you out, but this isn't the end of what we're doing. So I'm just really looking to just get a little bit here because I just want some contrast. So I have this now in a couple spots and let's add it to one more area, just a little bit. Love that. And I think that's where I'm going to end with that. And let's pull this up because I'm going to add polka dots, I think, in a different way. And I think what I'm going to do with that black, because it was a little bigger than I actually anticipated, I'm going to use a white paint pen on top of it. And you can see how much we're pulling up here. This is where little scrap pieces are good. building up a little bit of a grungy layer and I'm going to use a piece of belly paper to really grab everything up. It's got that little bit of grunginess to it. And I think what I want to do is I want to add something that's a little finer. So we're just going to put this down here and we're going to use a little bit more of a controlled a controlled way of adding some texture. Okay. So we need some black. Um, maybe not some black, maybe some pink. This is going to be kind of like 
dirtied up pink a little, which will be interesting. Let's see exactly how dirty. A little too dirty. Let's add a little bit more pink here. Get a little bit more pinky. And let's grab some mini, mini. I love it when I get some uh, little, whatever you call this, bubble wrap. And it's like really tiny. It's like different sizes. Oh, I love that. Okay. So we've got some little grunginess going on here. So it's interesting. It's different, right? And we're just going to add some texture in other ways um, to the piece. Because remember, I'm not going to be using this as a whole. So I'm just building interest and contrast for when we break it down. Now, with these pieces right here, this is where I'm going to utilize um, some paint pens and maybe some gel pens. Let's see how this works. Great. I'm just going to kind of create some patterns. And this doesn't have to be just done with gel pens. If you want to do this with paint as well, uh, you can use dotting tools. And see, now you're taking something that has that like deeper blackness to it and adding some further interest to it. And maybe you even want to just kind of trace the pattern and create a little bit more interest here in a different way. So you can add lots of different um, fun details in that in that way. So something else that you could do, like kind of take, listen to what I just said. I just said you can take like some paint even, right? So let's see, I need a clean surface here. So my surface, you can see this right here. It's like, I'm starting to collect all my things. Your desks, do you do that too? <laughs> when you create, you start to put everything off to the side. It did, right, Ray? It gave it a totally softer look. So just because you add, and this is why I did this, just because you add something like that, don't think that that's, and maybe you're like, oh my gosh, I just wrecked it. No, you didn't. It's just a matter of just playing with it. And what else can you do? So adding a little bit of the pink here with a little bit of the black underneath it gave it kind of like that dirtied up grungy pink, which is nice. And now we can even take a little bit of additional um, paint here and maybe we take like dotting tools. And these are things that you can get like off Amazon. They come in like kits and you can see the styluses and I'll hold these up here so that you can see they're all different sizes on both sides which can make some make for some very interesting um, things that you can do here. So I'm going to just brayer it out a little bit. I'm just gonna brayer the, the ink out a little bit and just add it over here. And I'm gonna take some of that. This is a much bigger piece, right? Maybe don't brayer it out too much. Leave it a little, there we go. might need to use like some more fluid paint and then you can just start to really kind of create some interesting patterns. Yeah, there's so many things and dotting tools are actually, and I'll put a link to that as well. They're actually pretty inexpensive um, and it's just sometimes that really fun, and this is kind of one of those mindless things that you can sit here, watch, listening to a movie or a podcast or, you know, music and just kind of, you know, it's one of those satisfying things. Just have some fun and uh, create some different looks. And you don't even have to do all of them. You could do some and leave some whole and maybe even bring in like golds or metallics. There's all sorts of things that you can do. I'm not going to do these all, so don't worry. I'm just gonna do a few here. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of the different things that you can do. So what's been going on in everybody's life lately? Just curious, are you crafting today or were you just scouring YouTube because you feel like you're stuck? I'd love to know. And if you're watching the replay, leave us a comment. What's going on in your lives? For me, I 
we had a death in the family, unfortunately, and I was on my husband's side. So we had to rearrange everything and head up to New York for a few days. Not really how you want to catch up with family, but, um, you know, it's part of life, unfortunately. Better person for having had Michael's uncle in my life or un uncle, cousin, you know, in my life. He was an amazing man. And, uh, you know, so I, I that's what, partly why I haven't really been going live because it kind of threw my life into chaos, just dropping everything and, you know, driving up there for a few days and had to reschedule a lot of meetings at work. And yeah, so, you know, that's just kind of kind of life. And then today is the first day of my vacation, believe it or not. So I'm excited because next week I want to and I actually am the reason I'm going over this is I, I'm actually liking this better than the gel pen. I just need to kind of clean this up and I need some better, some more actual paint. So next week, what my plan is to film a couple videos for you all, as well as kind of go live maybe during the day. Um, so I'd love for you to leave me a comment either in the chat or a comment comment if there's anything that you would like to see me do particular in particular, is there anything beyond gel printing that you'd like to see? You want me to play with a certain technique or just uh, maybe you want to see some alcohol inks or I don't know if everybody's still into card making or, you know, embossing techniques or just more gel printing, gel printing. I actually put a bunch of leaves on my table because I wasn't really sure. All right. Cruising YouTube. Yes. I didn't know they were having fires over there. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it's becoming that time of year. That totally transformed that. Um, stay inside with all the smoke and the winds. Yeah, I'm done with the wind too. <laughs> hey there, Dawn. Um, yeah, that completely transformed that. So now look at this now. You have interesting texture, right? So you have to look at this through a smaller a smaller scope. Now, what if you even had like, say, a circle? That would be very interesting because this for me, oh, I've got clearly I've got paint on my fingers. Um, and that's part of the thing with this. So sealing this with some distress glaze would be probably a good plan. So, you know, because this for me just was a little flat, it needed something. And that's where I was trying to bring in the contrast. Now, um, I'm not completely done here. Um, I'm not going to just finish this right now. We'll finish this off screen. But what I would love to do more another live of turning prints into projects, I can totally do that. Yeah, because I find a lot of value in that. Um, that's a great idea. That's a great idea, Don. Every technique. <laughs> every technique that narrowed it down <laughs> I'm gonna take something here um I love that see see I say that a lot <laughs> should almost turn into like a drinking game <laughs> this uh, this is another thing that you can do is just add some splatter and that could be that other little tiny finishing touch but I really do feel that it needed darker contrast as well um, so I'm thinking of another way to do that for this one beyond just splatter, which now I did the splatter, so it has to dry. And if you don't have white gloss spray, if you don't want to dive into gloss sprays, that's fine, but you need white. And Dina, if you're listening, you need a dark black because we don't have a dark black that I'm aware of in your line. If you've released one, then I will 100% get that. Um, and there are some really cool things with Lindy's too, has a really, really dark black that I actually just got. Um, it's a like a powder that transforms into a spray. I'm gonna be playing with that as well. But the thing that's different about the gloss spray, um, just so you know what the difference is between this and other things is because it's an acrylic base, um, it sits on top of the paper. So it doesn't get soaked in. And another thing that's really great would be bleed proof white, which is um, India ink. And that also, you don't see the color seep through it. Whereas if you were to use gesso, for instance, um, the color 
would kind of combine with it a little bit um, versus them kind of being two opposing forces that don't intermix. So, <laughs> all right. With this, I, the other really great way to add just that little something, something might be to take like um, some more. I don't want to put this down because it'll it'll move all the thing and then just put a little bit through. So you have that little tiny bit of contrast, same principle when you're printing as well. Um, or take something like uh, this, which is um, some drywall tape. I encourage you to get a roll. You'll, you'll have it for a lifetime. Um, it's sticky on one side. But the thing that's really cool is it creates this really, really nice, subtle a little bit of texture that you can add uh, for contrast. So what I, if you want, you can just cut yourself a little piece or cut yourself a bigger piece. I end up using the same piece for like a year. So like when I say this will last you a lifetime, I'm not kidding. Um, and then you can just kind of have that there and you can take some black, uh, some black either oxide, let's try the oxide. Let's try the black set. And make a roller here. Let's just get that. And we'll just add just a little tiny bit through there. You have to kind of push through. See, this is just going on top. That's not pushing through. We're going to need uh, actual paint. I just had it in my hands. OK. There we go. Now we've got some acrylic paint. Yep, so that we can actually get through through this. And onto there. And now it's just a little tiny bit. Oh, that is, I love this. Look at that. That is just the right amount of something because it needs that. Oh, I'm really, really liking that. Now I gotta add a little bit more. I got really excited here. I'm just gonna add a little more. You can also take a makeup sponge to kind of pounce through it. I'm not trying to make things perfect. And that's what I want you to realize. Sometimes the magic lies in imperfection, right? Okay, so things are a little too, I'm gonna use my finger here so that I can not have that perfect straight line because I don't want oh, a little bit of too much finger, right? Because I don't want it to look too perfect. So have it go a little outside of that. Oh, it's like the perfect bit of grunge. So now you've got that little bit of splatter and then we cut that down, do a little bit of dotting in here for interest to break up that blackness. And I would also even consider, um, you know, maybe even if you have like polka dots um, other things. So let's, let's do this really quick. Uh, white. So maybe in the middle, and you can also do some embossing. There's all sorts of things you can do. So I have the back of a Stabilo All pencil here. This is a red Stabilo All. And let's see how this looks. If we just do a big, a big circle here, right? Or maybe like a pencil eraser. And there's that little bit of something there. That's what it needs. It needs that little bit of something. All right, I love this. That grunge is really nice. Look at this. Okay, let's get that. Hopefully that'll focus in on that. I love that. This too is like really, really pretty. So just broken down. All right. That has been a lot of fun. So do you want to continue, would you all like to see a little bit of paint instead of instead of distress oxides? Maybe just take some real quick prints. I'm gonna actually clean this, which is something you never see me do, right? Shop towel. And I think what I want to do is just take some quick base prints. Of course we do. Okay. <laughs> well, if everybody has a busy day, I didn't want you. I'm on vacation, so I have time. <laughs> you all may not. Let me just take a little bit of water and just kind of spray that as well. 
I'll just kind of clean off what we got going on here. All right, since we had like an ink base with a lot of oranges and yellows, and you can see that that still needed to come up. It's nice to have you here, Ray. Thanks for joining us. That was fun. Um, that's what's so great about replays. I love replays. All right, so I am going to lift up some of this on my spare plate because I, I kind of, I want to play with leaves. And it's been a while since I've done that. And I thought that that might be some, be fun. So... Let's just clean off this other plate over here. <laughs> yeah. Smash the thumbs up. <laughs> it's funny. I actually work as a I work as a YouTube strategist. And it's one of those things where everybody's like, always oh, smash the like button, hit subscribe, and all that. And it's I always tell creators, you don't have to say that. It's okay. Because everybody else on YouTube is saying it. You don't need to. <laughs> it's funny. Um, it cracks me up. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know how you would smash the like button. That is always funny language to me. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> love that you said that. All right. So just kind of cleaning off all of this here so that we can allow some of the pretty colors to shine through here. And I just want to clean off my brayers a little bit quickly. Um, clean ship's a happy ship, right? Have to clean in between. Okay. I love that you do that, Dawn. That's awesome. See, and you know to do that. You didn't need me to tell you that, right? <laughs> this is really fun. All right. So. I'm gonna start off with some leaves. And when I print leaves, I like, I'm, I'm drawn to masculine colors. I just, I can't not be. So let's, let's go a little bit more on the muted side. And let's see here. We're just gonna put a little bit of this out. And I think what I'm gonna do, I, even though this is not muted, I'm gonna add it, well, maybe not. No, let's not, let's do this one. Okay, and this is a greenish blue. It is easy to forget, you're right, yeah. Easy to forget that, to, to hit the like and all that kind of stuff, but you end up coming back. Cobalt turquoise, tur turquoise and some phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is always beautiful, nice and deep. I love this color. This is uh, one of my not really not ultra marine but it's just got that really pretty blue like when you think of blue that deep kind of cobalt blue um and don't always feel like you need big huge tubes you know if you're just getting started with uh gel printing you know you can always do the um 59 you know two ounce two this is two ounces and this is one, three I'm not sure 120 milliliters so four so it's double the amount um, it takes me, I still, I've bought these over a year ago, nowhere close to, I'm close on one. And actually it's like probably a third. And I use this color all the time, all the time. So don't ever feel like you have to have all the big ones. Um, the little tiny ones, Ranger, those are small. And I have gone through several of those. Um, they aren't a lot of money which makes it a nice entry point however it's not a good bang for your buck so sorry ranger you know i love you i spend a lot of money with you just adding a little bit you want to pounce up and down here a lot of blues going on okay so i want some nice color uh, going on here. I'm going to just add a little bit to my other plate. So now that I have kind of spread that out and I rolled it off here, this is drier. So it's going to start to pull up a little color. And that's me now removing color and adding to here because it had a lot of color on it. So just wanted to kind of, and now I just want to kind of even this out because I can see those lines. So just wanting to kind of even this out a little bit so that I don't have that. 
and I've got something to play with here. So I've got several leaves. I'm just gonna go ahead and where I have the veins the most, that's where I'm gonna press down because I want that pattern in here. Same thing with all these other ones. And these are just from my backyard from last fall. I just like to keep these. Um, let's see here, they break after they've been dry for a while. And then I went to my boss's house in Kentucky and they had all these different kinds of trees last October. So, you know, I'm the weird lady in the hotel parking lot <laughs> picking up leaves. People are probably wondering, what is she doing? You know? Yeah. Is that you? Is that you when you find cool things that are provide cool texture that you pick it up from everywhere all around? And then I just to keep leaves in um, a kind of like basket because I like having different sizes that I can do something fun with. And these are some of those really, really small leaves. Different shapes, different sizes. Don't feel like they all have to be the same kind. And I like to turn them in different directions as well. Yep, so there we go. And let's see here. There we go. So we have some fun ones. And I think, I feel like my paint might have dried because I took too long to do that. So my paper fell. Let's go ahead and pull this up and kind of see what we have here. I have a feeling that it dried because I took too long to do that. Yep. So I'm gonna to need to add a different layer. I just wanna press the leaves in a little and see if we can't pull that up. I did. I was talking instead of working. It's kind of one of those things that you have to go quickly on. So let's see what we can pull up here. I think before I do that, I wanna push a stencil um, into the background, maybe Let's use some drywall tape instead, because this will give us some some interest. Um, that's not that doesn't work against the leaves. I'm standing now, by the way. So I'm going to add this down, and then I'm going to take something here. I'm just gonna kind of press it in because I'm trying to remove some of that dried paint. All the blue has actually dried. And I just wanna press, let's see if I can't pull, yes, perfect. I didn't, all right, that's my bad. So the paint dried before I added the leaves, which means that it's not pulling up the, it's not actually pulling up the pattern. Only in a live. This has literally never happened to me doing it on my own. Live crafting. All right, so let's do this. And we're gonna create, we're gonna create pattern by removing the paint in this way instead. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a top layer to pull the whole thing up and really get the pattern up. All right. So because the painter's tape has a sticky side to it, it's taking the paint with it when I lift it, which is convenient. See? I love. This is truly one of my most favorite materials to work with. And it's got the, it has the leaf pattern there. I don't know if you can see that. So now I'm just gonna lift, gently lift, cause this is dry, right? Ooh, that was a good one. Cause that was one of the first ones we put down, right? So we have the leaf veining really, really well there. That's pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna just gently pull that away. Cause I love these leaves. I love using them. Okay, and we're just gonna keep doing this here. Exactly, who needs perfection? <laughs> but 
but you can really see the pattern of the leaves. Leaves are a very cool thing to use. So now I'm curious in the, um, if you're watching a replay, leave a comment. Cause I'd love to, cause I come back and I read these comments too, by the way. <laughs> and I leave people answers to their questions and um, further feedback. So I'm curious, those of you in the chat, what are your favorite texture making tools from around the house? Things that you wouldn't necessarily buy. There is no such thing as perfection. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm really loving the way this is coming out actually. Drywall tape, which is what this is. My dad was so sweet when he saw me using the rolls and what I was using it for. And there's really light veining to that that I just pulled up. A trivet. Interesting. So tell us more about the trivet. What kind of shape? I would love to know. Like, what does it give you? That's fascinating. I've never heard of anybody using something like that. I want to get a little bit more pattern here. Oh, whoops, I need to do this so that we can actually see the shapes, right? Cast iron, interesting. So I'm going to push this down here. Oh, honeycomb, that's a great pattern. I have a little piece that I got that's similar. It's not, I don't know if it's actual honeycomb. Um, what is it? I got it from like a texture pack that I got from somebody on, on Etsy. And um, it's kind of like silicone, which is kind of cool. And, uh, you know, you can create a really cool pattern with that. Anybody ever try um, sequin waste? You can get some of that too from people on Etsy. That can be a cool way to add. Maybe we'll use that also. There we go. So let's pull up this on the outside here leaving that pattern. Okay, cool. Because it's got the leaf pattern now in there. So the only one that I don't really like is, unfortunately, the leaf kind of fell apart on me. So I just need to kind of press it in. I'm just pressing the veining in a little bit, uh, but it's really, really dry, so it's not going to do anything. All right. So now that we have this, it's a lot of blue, right? Um, usually what I like to do when I have my leaves down is pull up that negative color that's left. Let me actually move this better into view um, so that you can all see that. And then we're going to go ahead and, yeah, I have lots of acorns and pine cones and things like that. Let's go ahead and pull up. Um, we need to add a color down first. You know what, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add white to it, pull it up, and then when we're finishing the print, we're gonna add stuff to the top of it, I think for a little bit of more interest and things like that. So before I do this though, let me just see, you know what, let me add the white and then we'll pull up more with the white. That's what we'll do. Cause we need, we need, we need a wet layer. Cause right now this is completely dry. You can see there's, it's completely dry. So one of the things you can do is you could always use transparent white, which obviously isn't going to be as bright, but I'm going to use white white. Okay. And I think because it's so dry, I need just a little tiny bit more. So especially over here. Oh, you don't have a lot of stencils to use? Well, then... Ladies, and I don't know if we have a gentleman here, um, let's give some ideas for things to do around the house. I'm going to use an egg carton because egg cartons give me some of the cool
coolest patterns. Um, you have anything that holds like limes or garlic or uh, onions, oranges, all of those like mesh kind of bags. They're all different sizes. Keep those. Your husband or partner is going to be like, okay, seriously, come on. This is just garbage. No, it's not garbage. I promise. So before before I take the poll, I'm just going to take an egg carton. And different egg cartons have different patterns, too, by the way. So here's one that's kind of like out of styrofoam. And here's one that's kind of like out of a biodegradable material, right? So let's just do them here. And you'll see they have different patterns. One, This one has a little bit more of a roundish pattern. And the other one has kind of like more of like an oblongish pattern. Um, so that's just going to kind of pull up what's going on, um, giving us a little bit of interest. Uh, you can also add other things to it. Unfortunately, this is drying as I'm doing this, right, Ingrid? So let's pull this up. Let's get that going because I don't want this. I want this to transfer. I don't want this to be stuck on the plate. And I'm going to need this to completely, completely transfer as well before doing that. So since I have all this extra stuff, I want to kind of pull this up. Leftover plastic rings from adhesive. Oh, smart. And think of all the different tops, right? The different bottle tops and things that you have. Um, I collect them big jars, like big things of nuts. Uh, I get this thing from Aldi, big thing of cashews. And it has this big giant ring top. Um, I'm always grabbing that as well as from every little tiny jar that we have. Um, what else? What else do you have there, ladies? Think about things that make texture. Like this was like sequin waste. So if you have other crafting materials that come in specific packaging, um, can something be used as a stencil? Uh, I'm trying to think of other things. Oh. If you have like even like a pencil, um, maybe you have an eraser that has kind of gone dry. I don't have one right here. Most of my pencils that I have right here don't have erasers on them. But that makes a perfect little polka dot shape as well. Um, yeah, anything that like the middle of tape or um, even like cans, you know, like when you have things like this, um, <clears throat> you know, the bottom of a, of a, of a glue bottle makes for an interesting shape. Um, even this is an interesting ring that you can use for different circles. Um, things like Q-tips, fabric, burlap, smart, Legos, there's a good one, slinkies, um, different things like that. There's all sorts of things that you can use. Now, I'm worried that this isn't gonna pull up, but we'll see. Look at how cool that looked, right? You got a little peek here. <laughs> what's coming. You didn't think it was really going to be anything, right? <laughs> I love this. Keep ideating here in the chat. What else? <laughs> Get you those creative juices going. You know, something else that creates pattern to our brushes. So think of like, if you have paint brushes or something else, maybe it's a brush that, you know, you let dry and it shouldn't have, that creates texture of some sort. Um, what else can create texture? Game pieces, for sure. Great idea. I hadn't heard of that one before. That's a good one. Cardboard, yes. The inside of a Starbucks, uh, you know, the protective wrapping, I love to use that because it's nice and small and fine. Oh, this is, oh, this is very, very satisfying. Look at this. I'm loving this. Oh, this just makes me happy. You you were 100% right. Oh, look at how beautiful this is. I love how broken it is. You know, it's like not perfect. Oh, so cool. Now, see, this is really what I was after was like this. So when the leaves, you know, the, the leaf pulls up the paint, but leaves that detailed veining behind. Now, because the paint had dried here, so this is where I went wrong. Because the paint had dried so quickly, because I was chatting with you all, because you all are so fun to chat with, um, <laughs> I was unable to really get that veining here. Now, um, 
in order to, because everything had dried, being utilizing that drywall tape that had that sticky side to it, pulled up the pattern, which gave us pattern, which gave us something different rather than having that full just blue area like this. And then the one thing that's interesting is um, I used that white on top, but everything was so dry underneath, it didn't have enough time to really react with it because you can't really see the egg cartons, can you? Right? So this is really kind of one of the beautiful things about working with leaves. And it's okay that you can't see things here because another option is to come into this with a gel pen or something else and to just draw in that veining a little bit. We still have, like you said, the positive and the negative here. So I don't think that this is, um, I don't think that, yes, you're right. <laughs> Remember to not chat next time <laughs> so that the color does not dry. <laughs> Um, so, you know, you want to, you want to be able to, um, still add that interest and we can still do that in different ways or something else we can do. And this is just a thought right now could always add some paint to this, like a, an opposing color, a white and seeing if we can't transfer that there. That's a possibility. Um, probably not going to work all that well, but it's, we could try it. Um, oh, maybe it would. You know what? We got nothing to lose here, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's try it with one and we'll see how it works. I'm trying to find the exact leaf that was here. Not that one. I think it was this one. Maybe not. I'm not really sure what happened to it. It could have also broken up. Is this good? No. I just need to find one that's somewhat close. <laughs> That's Aha, here we go. I just had to flip it over. Oh, interesting. I used the wrong side. I didn't use the vein side. That was me talking and not paying attention. So that being the case, um, I'm still going to try it. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to use some white. I'm just gonna use this because this dried over here and is not acrylic, acrylic paint. And let's see how this works. Give it a shot. Make sure I'm adding it to the right side. Okay. So I'm just gonna add some white to it, right? And we're gonna see what we do. I'm not going to worry about it being perfect. If it doesn't go on perfectly, that'll be okay because I think some of the um, imperfection in this case will serve us really well. So, hey, Tiffany. You've been rearranging and being productive. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Multitasking at her best. So just going to kind of add this down. I'm going to try and not get fingerprints and stuff on there too. So let's see here. Now we're talking. Okay, that's good. At least you can see this is me pushing my finger in here. Um, and because I'm so close inside, this other side has more veining. Let's see if we can't pull that up. Oh, it made it look a little cracked. I like that. I don't think spraying it with water would necessarily help. Water is not really something I'm ever adding to these. Uh, you mean like as in uh, not having these be so dry? Was that the question? Um, not really quite sure. So this leaf right here was this little guy. So let's see if we can't add a little bit of white to this also. Well, welcome. We're happy you opened YouTube and are joining us. This leaf is breaking down, which is unfortunate because it's the leaf I need. So let's uh, grab a palette knife. Yep, that's just so not gonna work. All right, this is gonna be its last shot. This leaf is not gonna make it. You know, one of the things that I love about, and I don't know, feel about this but one of the reasons I love to use nature 
in my artwork is because, you know, for me, the, the, if I don't know if you all have seen the video that like Tiffany, Karen and myself did uh, a couple of years back, or actually it was maybe a year and a half ago um, with the leaves. Everything that I said in that video is how I really, and it's just kind of one of those things where, you know, nature casts all this aside in the fall. And, you know, and it feels like then they all just kind of go back into the earth and there's something beautiful about that. But I would love to just kind of take some of that beauty, you know, that gets ta uh, cast aside and kind of turn it into some art so that it has like more life. Oh, look at that. That's actually really pretty. Digging that. Okay. All right, I don't think I'm going to be able to really get a whole lot from some of these pieces that broke, but let's see what we can do. Um, somebody had mentioned spraying water, and that's a good idea. I'm going to do this off to the side here because I don't want it on my plate and I don't want it on the print. So let's see if we can't give a little bit more life. Does anybody have any ideas on how to... I love that you other ladies are like being crafty and doing things <laughs> for your crafty business. That's awesome. Um, anybody else have any ideas on how to up a little, you know, in a quick way without, so I can actually use it. I love that we're kind of doing this together. I'm going to have to turn this into like a piece of artwork versus like cards. Cause I love doing that too creating frameables. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Mary. Mary says she's been catching up with all the different videos and things. I, you know, I, I do that. I also go back and listen to um, content even long after sometimes, because sometimes you hear things differently the second time around, or you're just in a different place you know, when, if you're just starting, you're so consumed with everything being overwhelming and how stuck you get, um, everything's so new. And then later on and later on in your crafty journey, you know, you may be stuck in a different way and it may not be so obvious, but maybe you just needed to hear something at the right time. So I always revisit stuff myself. Um, I need like a little spongy guy and, uh, not seeing that on my desk. Here we go. Okay. I need to like add some paint in different ways. Did it get clearer? Sponges are definitely an, a must have in your craft stash. Um, just buy like a big bag on Amazon or wherever you have dollar store or whatever has makeup sponges um, because they're really handy for stuff like this. When you don't really want your fingerprints, you know, leaving that behind. Um, and like for here, this is now a softer surface. because I don't want to have too much pressure in certain areas. So, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. So even though this isn't really the right shape, you know, it's enough. This is more about leaving, leaving the patterning in there. That is, oh, I love that it's clear. Thank you so much for telling me that. That is so helpful. <laughs> so super helpful. Okay, so now that we did that, I think I'm gonna uh, try and get this one too. If I can find the right leaf here. Aha. It's interesting that I kept using the wrong side of the leaf. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and I just had the sponge, here it is. Let's add some paint from this. This is a little too much paint, so I'm gonna kind of knock some of this off. I don't, it's just about getting just some of that texture, right? and just transferring just the right amount. So I'm not pressing too hard because I had a lot of paint on there. I'm really looking for the veining is what I want. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, so it's just that little bit. 
Okay, let's add just a little tiny bit more here. Not too much. I want that. I don't want like a big glob of paint. I just want like a little bit of the veining. There we go. See, you can fix stuff. All right, so if you're just joining us um, or you're watching the replay, you're gonna want to see the chat from a few minutes ago because, and I know if you're just joining us, you're not able to see the chat, but you'll have to catch it on the replay. We came up with an insane amount of things that you can use uh, to create texture that you have in your house, things that you don't need to go out and buy. I'm all for buying craft supplies, don't get me wrong. Um, but a lot of things that you also have that you know you don't even realize that you have. So I'm just encouraging you to kind of take a look at the world around you first. You know, and you might just be surprised. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh, I love that. See, I say that a lot. I'm just going to kind of add a little bit in here just for a little bit of interest. Okay, I am totally digging this. Different bottles. Yep, there's so many cool things. Now, some of the things that we didn't talk about were things like forks, you know, to create some really cool stuff or, you know, even beyond, you know, the obvious like the grid type patterns. Um, you know, what other tools? I saw somebody and these are like some um, older tools, like maybe when you go to uh, garage um, what do they call them, garage sales and stuff, like old gnocchi makers that have all the ridges or maybe some other things that have like a honeycomb pattern or painting supplies. You'd be shocked. Go up and down the aisles in Home Depot or Lowe's, how many different things you can find. Okay, so now that we have this, what I'm really needing is more something different, some other color. And we have all this pattern here on the background because it was a necessity, right? We had to somehow remove it so that we could actually see the leaves because if we hadn't been able to pull that up, we wouldn't see these leaves. Now, when you're going to actually take this to another level, you need to start dipping into an all Stabilo All Pencil, um, which is like a watercolor pencil. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add a little bit of water here. I dip this in here. And so as you start to create like your coasters or things like that, I want you to add like a little bit of shading. These are the things that I've done um, on a lot of coasters. So like this is one that I made. Um, I made this print. I'll link the video in the description below in the collaboration that I did with Tiffany and Karen, who are both here in the chat. When I actually did, actually made the coasters, I made the prints in that video. And when I made the coasters, and I'll link the coaster video as well, um, I took a Stabilo All Pencil, okay? And I have a video that I made a card where I show this really well, how it was a print that went all sorts of wrong. And I was able to rescue it and find the art within the print. And it was probably one of my most proud artistic moments is because it was probably the most stuck I've ever been in my artistic 25 year career. Um, and to be able to see the magic and have it unfold in front of me as I um, just kind of play around was really something special. And I gave that card to a good friend of mine um, who really kind of helped me through, through a really hard situation. Um, you know, just kind of mentally helping me get my, find my art, my artistic side again. Um, but that card, you know, to be able to lift something, you can see that it's water. So it's a water-based pencil. You have to seal it afterward with gel medium. Um, it was just such a special moment. And you can also take this to do like light shadowing even along the veining if you want to bring that out a little bit more. There's so much that you can do. But you can see here, like even with this one, and use the contrast. And this is this was made with an acorn. So it really helps to lift it up from the print. Now my fingers are really, really dirty, so I don't want to mess with it too much at this point because all I'm doing is smearing it around. But because this is acrylic paint, it's very forgiving, okay? You can just kind of pull stuff away from that. So don't be afraid to experiment. 
with some of that stuff. I want to add a little bit of interest and I'm going to do it um, with contrast in mind. So maybe adding a little bit of orange kind of like we did here. Um, this worked so well because I was able to work quickly and I had pulled the, this color away, leaving just the pattern. Um, this is kind of like the, the opposite problem. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't still add things to it. I don't want to add something that's going to compete with everything. So I'm going to keep things simple to like circles and little things. So let's take a little bit of orange. All right. Let's brayer this out here. Let's brayer that out. And let's add add a circle, you know, in a spot, but I'm only going to do just one. Okay. I don't have any paint. Else. So I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast in just this one, just like a little ring. Okay. See, now it's about controlling what's going on. And you know, I need to be very careful because I've got paint like right there. <laughs> so let's pull that off before I start adding more paint around. And let's add another, just single, single circle, okay, here. It's about being very intentional with what you're doing so that you don't pull focus from everything else. So I'm just going to add that here. And if anybody has any ideas for what to add, please jump in here and, of course, let me, I'm going to flip it around now. No, nope, I'm not. Let me just pull that away because I don't want, I just want to, just the one. And what I really should do is when I have one of these that is like at the end or it rips at some point, I should just cut away like a single or a quad so I have a smaller, a smaller version to do this kind of stuff with. Um, let's just go ahead and add... And don't be afraid to go off your project too. I always want you to think, I, I've set, been saying my entire career to all my students, think like wrapping paper. Wrapping paper, the design does not end before the edge. It goes off the edge. So your design should too. So don't always feel like you have to put the circle on the, on the piece itself. I want you to think, just go off the edge as well. All right. And let's just add this here fun. This is good. And some of the paint that I'm picking up, you know, it's not like fully there. There's little spots making it. Um, yeah, that works. I'm liking this one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know why I'm counting because this is not going to be a, a whole piece anyway. Um, but I feel like we need a little more. So because I want to add this here, but I don't want it I don't want it to be on the leaf. So I'm gonna use my leaf as a mask, letting that kind of feel like it tucks behind here as well. All right, this is kind of cool. I'm digging this. I'm gonna to need to use a Stabilo All Pencil and quite honestly, that's the kind of thing where it's you sit down with a movie because it's gonna take a while to do. So maybe you can mix a medium that slows down the drying process. Yeah, I, that's a great idea. I actually have that, Estella. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix in a retarder um, with it so that you have a more open paint. Golden makes open paints, and that is something that you can do. Thank you for saying that, so smart. Yes, I will do that next time so that I can actually talk. Brilliant. Very, very helpful, very helpful situation suggestion. So I think from here, um, what I need to do is I actually need to cut this down and I actually need to think um, rather than kind of work live on this. So I'll have to do that. And maybe on the next live stream where we're going to take prints and we're going to turn them into projects, I'll have a plan so that we can do that. What I'd love for everybody to do is once this live has rendered, if you're in the chat, please go ahead and leave me suggestions of other things you want to see when I do the project piece. And then if you're watching the replay, leave me that in the comments because I would love to know other things that you want to see me make 
<clears throat> I'm going to create an artistic piece. So I'm probably going to take bits and pieces of this, something that's frameable, and see how we can incorporate this. And I'm also, I might do another live where we're just pulling actual leaf prints as well, um, just to kind of get more opportunity because this is just one. Because when we're doing printing, and I'm printing with leaves, I like to sit and just do tons of different ones because not everything works out perfectly. And sometimes you need like eight or 10 to find just the right one or just the right two. So uh, don't always feel like it has to be just one thing. Um, and if you're watching the replay, there's a link right here to the video that I mentioned about the other um, leaf print that I made. So be sure to watch that for you to get creating. Bye now.